Hey guys, it's Amoya here and I'm in Bath, UK right now. I'm actually not sure where I'm in the city. I got lost a little bit from walking around. I see this amazing church here. Let me show you guys a little bit how that looks. It's actually so tall that I can't even uh, show you guys the whole thing in one shot. It's crazy how good it looks. It's a, it's a lovely city actually, very historical. Uh, too bad it's the UK weather, you know, it's all, always raining. And it's currently raining. I don't know if you guys can actually see that on the camera, but it's quite rainy. And um, I'm just walking around the city. I decided to turn on the camera to film a little bit for you guys. Let me see what's happening here. Very pretty city, to be honest. Like it's a, it's a small town, center of England. And uh, I didn't expect this. So I'm here for, for a conference called the uh, Personal Trainer Collective Conference. Amazing. As you guys know, I'm pretty big in our knowledge. I'm gonna be learning from the leading experts in the field of nutrition science, exercise science, obesity, all these things that are super, super important for me and also the stuff that I'm bringing to you guys on the channel. I'm gonna hopefully be able to get guys that, that I really learn from a lot on camera as well to show you guys a couple of uh, things. And um, while I'm here, you guys know that I'm currently on a diet, so hitting your macros while traveling, you know, it's always a hot topic. Let me hit that shirt, church one again, once again in the shot, looks amazing. So hitting your macros while you're traveling is quite a big topic, you know, and people are always wondering, well, how do you do that? Like, how can you, how can you uh, go travel and, and, and be sure that you're hitting your macros and be sure that everything is gonna be fine? And I know a lot of body, quote unquote, like, even non-professional bodybuilders will simply hide at home and they're gonna be like, avoiding family dinners, avoiding friends, family, avoiding everything when they can hit their macros. And that's one of the things that I wanted to a little bit, to, I guess, just reveal a couple of tips that I'm using right here when I'm in Bath, UK. I actually rented a place that doesn't have a kitchen, so there's no self-prepared food, there's no like easy way out, right? So I have to buy food and I have to eat food out. How do I do that? How do I hit my macros with that? Well, it's actually quite simple. So first thing is you wanna find a big supermarket wherever you live, find a big supermarket nearby, find one place to go. Don't try to find a billion places because you will get paralyzed by choice and there's too many options and it's less likely that you're gonna take the good option, right? So find a big supermarket that has a lot of in good food in there that is pre-made, right? So things that have this looks awesome. Things that have nutrition labels and nutrition labels will help you hit your macros. How? Well, you can easily see what's inside, right? So as my main protein source for the next few days will be cottage cheese, why did I choose cottage cheese? Well, it's simple because I can just hit my macros with it and I don't know exactly how much I ate and I know exactly what's inside, how much fat, how, much, how many carbs I got, everything is in there. Uh, in terms of carbohydrate, there's so many breads that are nutritionally labeled that you can actually see the exact macros and you can get the fiber as well simply by eating vegetables which you can log by piece or you can just get pre-made salads in like bowls that they sell in every single shop pretty much everywhere in the world, man. I've been to more than 40 countries and, and, and this formula kind of works for every place. So rely on nutritionally labeled foods. That's the rule number one. So don't go outside of those foods. Go for foods that are really, you know, what is inside. Additionally, when you go out, if you really want to go to a restaurant and want to go to eat in a restaurant, just make sure to give the waiter the, the instructions. What do you want them to do with the food? So if you tell them, hey, I would please tell the person who's preparing the food to make it a little bit less oily, use less dressing, don't use dressing at all. Just try to make it like as lean as possible and things like that and order the leanest meat that you can there. And these little hacks, they go a long way because I think a lot of people when they, when they travel, when they try to maintain their fitness, they just lose the mindfulness aspect of it. They just panic. And I used to do that as well. Like first time when I was traveling, when I, when I went to, to Amsterdam for the first time when I was flying there, I mean, man, I. I freaking panicked, you know. I, I was completely off for the first few weeks. I didn't know what to do. Uh, I didn't know how to hit my goals. I was like completely lost. But then I realized, well, look, I'm gonna be doing this for a very long time. So better learn how to do it, better learn how to adapt and how to actually do this. So again, you know, think outside of the box. Like don't trust your initial reaction because your first reaction when you travel is usually 
stress, right? It, it's gonna be stress regardless of how much travel experience you have because new city, new place, it's gonna be stressful because you're uncomfortable. It's human, as human beings, when you change your whole environment, you're gonna be a little bit uncomfortable because you're not used to it. Your brain is still that same brain the caveman, well, similar to the same brain the caveman had. And when the environment changed for him, he would panic because his survival would be in danger. Similar things for here, like things like just choosing what to eat will take you an hour instead of five minutes when you're at home, right? Or no minutes at all, right? Or just, just eat whatever is planned, right? So. It's important not to trust that first initial reaction that you have, which is panic, fear, stress, and just overcome that and just simply be solution oriented, right? Solution, 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 solution. For me, an easiest solution is to find a big supermarket. Just woke up, walked around the city, found this uh, Waitrose that is right next door. I have to get some food in it, see what they have. New city, everything new. Time to hit some macros. Oh, this place is awesome. It has like everything, everything you could possibly imagine. Let's see what kind of protein they have here. Wow, okay. It's probably some pre-made food as well. Let me check out. Right. Okay. We still, we were not afraid we are gonna have some uh, lack of carbohydrates. That's at least not a problem. All right, let's check out the nutrition of this thing. 17 grams of fat. We got seven grams of protein, 17 grams of fat. Tuna salad, it has an egg inside. Let's see what do we got uh, per pack. Not bad, not bad. We're getting into protein, That's about 17.6. I know that I can get my protein from canned fish that, that is very easy to measure. I know that I can get my protein from um, cottage cheese that is super easy to measure. I know I can get my carbs from things like that are pre-made breads that, that super easy to measure. Maybe even some, uh, they have a buffet bar or sushi bar. They actually do have a sushi bar here, which is awesome because you can easily measure the, the amount in sushi. So the key is really staying that, being that mindful person, being that person who is focused on the solution. And I think from uh, the years of traveling that, that I had, you know, you can always gather, gather experience. You can have a ton of experience, but the experience will only help you in the same place where you go, like that, that specific experience will only help you with that same place if you go there again. But some of the general rules, the general principles are really to be that solution oriented fo person instead of being that person who's like out of panic and then goes into all or nothing type of behavior where it's like, oh, well, I just blew a day of dieting. I might as well blew the whole diet and just uh, not do anything for a couple of weeks. And that kind of behavior is really destructive. And that's the kind of behavior that's gonna get you in trouble. One extra kebab or one extra meal that you eat in a week that you can't measure. I mean, even if you're 500 calories off, which it's, it's hard. I mean, it, it is definitely possible to be 500 calories off. It's still not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, but it's, it is a big deal if you do that every single day. And if you don't exercise for a couple of weeks while you're traveling, that will definitely be uh, destructive in terms of your physique and in terms of your habits when you come back into, into doing and taking action, improving your physique and improving this area of your life. So just a couple of quick tips here from Bath UK. I'm gonna be walking around the city. Uh, it's freaking rainy. I'm gonna also meet up with a buddy here uh, who's gonna take me to the gym. I'm gonna do a couple of uh, exercises there, not, not to miss out on that because over the weekend I won't have time. I'm gonna be hustling, I'm gonna be uh, learning a lot so hope you guys are learning and, and doing what you need to be doing on your end as well shout out here from bath uk i'm going to continue around the city film some uh, film some footage and i'll see you guys in the next one peace i think they then they actually nominated this city to be like one of the uk's beautiful small city of things like that so uh, i don't know if those are any any value in those so let me give you guys a shot here looks pretty cool. 